Welcome to the guide, Exile. In this guide we will be discussing the Guardians of the Void and strategies for defeating them. The Guardians of the Void are the Shaper's captors. They guard the void between worlds, where the Shaper resides. It is in this void that the Shaper has made his own realm, where he is working to reform and construct his own world, free of imperfections. But with this struggle to reach perfection, corruption and decay has been brought upon into our world of Rayclast. In order to stop this, we must get to the Shaper's realm to confront him, and to do so, we must first face his captors, the Guardians. Each of the Guardians hold a fragment of the key to the Shaper's realm, and must be defeated for their key fragment. These encounters are very difficult and have vastly different mechanics that you must be aware of, so let us take an in-depth look at each of these Guardians. The Guardians are very difficult encounters that reside in Tier 16 maps and require preparation, proper defenses, and good damage to be defeated. Since there are many different build types, it is hard to say exactly what defenses and offenses you will need to complete these encounters, but I will make a few base recommendations here. For defenses, you will want to be looking for 6000 plus life, or 8000 plus energy shield if you are CI. These numbers are not set in stone and can vary depending on your other defenses and offenses. A fast movement skill for dodging attacks. A good source of physical mitigation. This includes, but is not limited to, fortify, granite flasks, basalt flasks, and endurance charges. Added elemental mitigation. This includes, but is not limited to, fortify, and elemental flasks that provide plus to maximum elemental resistances. And finally, sustainable defenses. This includes some sort of leech or regeneration mechanics, as these fights can last very long and you will not always have your other defenses up at all times. For offenses, you will want very strong single target damage. It is tough to say exactly what kind of damage you will need, depending on your skill and your back end damages, but for reference, these guardians have around 8 times more health than tier 15 bosses. If you wish to kill all of the guardians on a single character, it is recommended to build around upfront damage, being that of physical or elemental, as many of the guardians have status ailment immunities that includes bleed, poison, and elemental ailments. Of course, these are just recommendations that are guidelines, and can be varying depending on your character. As the Guardians reside in Tier 16 maps, you will always want to be chiseling and crafting these maps rare to get the most returns from them. However, you will want to try and avoid as many deadly modifiers as possible, as to not make these fights any harder than they need to be for little return and the possible loss of a map. Here are the general modifiers that you will want to try and avoid on all Guardian maps. You will want to be trying to avoid damage mods on these bosses as best as possible, as they will be able to most definitely one-shot you with these. You will also want to try and avoid getting any combination of monster life on the map, as the Guardians already have an incredible amount of life on them already. Aside from these map mods, I will mention other specific mods to avoid on certain Guardians. So let's begin by looking at the easiest of the Guardians, the Guardian of the Minotaur. The Guardian of the Minotaur resides in the maze of the Minotaur map. He is a brute that does not hesitate to inflict pain, making use of a two-handed mace that deals physical and lightning damage. He is immune to stun, bleeding, chill, and freeze. The Minotaur makes sure to get in your face and will never let you walk away from the fight. The Minotaur performs the following moves. A melee attack, a basic attack that deals physical and lightning damage. Sweep, a wide sweep attack that deals physical and lightning damage. Recommendation is to try and move away from the Minotaur to get out of his sweep range. Overhead slam, a large AoE melee attack that deals physical and lightning damage, as well as creating a large cave-in zone that lasts for 35 seconds. This zone spawns stone golem adds, as well as falling rocks that deal deadly physical damage. The recommendation is to move out of the way of this slam and lure the Minotaur out of the cave-in. A burrow. The Minotaur dives under the ground towards the chosen target in a straight line. During the burrow, anything in its path will take physical damage. Upon reaching the target zone, the Minotaur will burst from the ground, dealing deadly physical damage in a small AoE. The Minotaur will not follow the target if it moves once he is in the burrow. Recommendation. The Minotaur will randomly choose a target to go after for this move, including totems and golems, so try to recognize which target he is going for. From there, get out of the way of his path and avoid being near the location where he is going to emerge. Lightning Barriers For every 20% of life that the Minotaur loses, one of the Lightning Barriers will activate. These barriers will deal lightning damage and apply shock, as well as a very strong movement, attack, and cast speed slow. Recommendation Try and avoid walking through these barriers at all costs. If you have to walk through them, make sure to lure the Minotaur as far away as possible so that you can make it through the barrier without conflict. If you have a lightning warp or a flame dash, you can use these to teleport past them without them affecting you at all. For this encounter, you will want to make sure you have good physical mitigations. Fortify and endurance charges make for very strong options. 
For flasks, you will want to make use of the following, a basalt flask and a stibnite flask. These flasks are great as a basalt flask gives 20% physical mitigation and a stibnite applies blind to the minotaur, making him inaccurate. You can also make use of a topaz flask, but the minotaur only deals 30% of physical damage as lightning. For flask affixes, you will want to make use of the following, of grounding. This affix is useful for removing shock status ailment if it is applied during any of the minotaur's attacks or by the lightning barrier. Specific deadly map mods for this boss include, players are cursed with vulnerability. As most of the boss's damage and the falling rock damage is physical, this will make them hit even harder. Now to begin the fight, make sure you have all of your defenses and offenses prepared. You are able to move up to the lower lightning barrier before triggering the boss, thus allowing you to place your totems or charge your skills up. When placing totems, try to place them close to his start so that he will not immediately burrow to the totem. After you have started the fight, make sure to watch for the telegraphed sweep, overhead slam, and burrow attacks that he performs. As he starts placing cave-ins, try to move out of these, luring the minotaur out of them. Rocks from these cave-ins can one-shot most builds, and if there are overlapped cave-ins, these rocks will most definitely hit you. A lot of builds that utilize heavy life leech are able to stand in these cave-ins without issue, so this advice can vary between builds. Be careful to not move too far away from the minotaur during the fight, or you will trigger a burrow, which can be very deadly if you do not see him perform it off-screen. If the minotaur does perform a burrow, make sure to avoid his path and target zone for his emergence, if you are able to identify it. Once you start activating lightning barriers, the fight will become a little bit more claustrophobic, requiring you to either face tank the boss or move through the barriers. If you do have to move through a lightning barrier, try to lure the minotaur as far from the barrier as possible before moving through it. Remember that if you have instant teleport movement skills like flame dash and lightning warp, you will be able to avoid all effects of the lightning barrier. If you ever run out of flasks, feel free to take a portal and reset them. Notable drops from the Guardian of the Minotaur include the Brain Rattler, the Brass Dome, and the Fragment of the Minotaur. Now that you have defeated the Minotaur, let us move on to the next Guardian, the Guardian of the Hydra. The Guardian of the Hydra resides in the layer of the Hydra map. She hides behind her mask, making use of her range to keep her targets at bay. The Hydra deals 50% physical and 50% cold damage, and she is immune to knockback, poison, chill, and freeze. The Hydra deals deadly damage with her bow attacks and is very fast in her attack patterns. The Hydra performs the following moves. Barrage. Fires a barrage attack of arrows that deal physical and cold damage. Recommendation is to move to the left, right, or behind the Hydra to avoid this move. Doom Arrow. Fires an arrow into the air and a progression of explosions will trigger in a straight line in front of her. This attack deals deadly physical and cold damage and can overlap. Recommendation, move to the back of the Hydra to avoid this attack. Fork Arrow, charges up and fires a single arrow that forks multiple times at set distances. The charge up for this skill is depicted as a large blue sphere on top of the bow. This attack deals 300% of her base damage in the form of physical and cold damage and is very deadly. Recommendation is to move behind the Hydra or to the left or right side of the projectile as it will always fire out in a straight line from the Hydra and form a heart-like shape around her. Teleport Shot The Hydra disappears and summons minions one by one. These minions can drop cold damage vortexes on death. Soon after the minions finish spawning, the Hydra will reappear in a random location in the arena. Recommendation is to move to the center of the arena to kill these minions as quick as possible. Frost Bolts Cold damage frost bolts will continuously fire from the sides of the arena in a random pattern. These will begin to fire more frequently as the Hydra comes closer to death. Recommendation. These are tough to avoid, but try to shift around during the fight to avoid these from hitting you. For this encounter, you will want to make sure you have good physical and elemental mitigations. Fortify and endurance charges make for very strong options. For flasks, you will want to make use of the following. A basalt flask, stibnite flask, and a sapphire flask. These flasks are great as a basalt flask gives flat 20% physical mitigation and a stibnite applies blind to the Hydra, making her inaccurate. The Sapphire Flask base helps mitigate the damage dealt by the Frost Bolts and the Hydra's attacks. For Flask Affixes, you will want to make use of the following. Of Heat. This Flask Affix is required if you are not Elemental Status Ailment Immune, as the Hydra can easily freeze you and Chill is being applied at all times during the fight. Specific deadly map mods for this boss include Minus Maximum Player Resistances, and Monsters Fire 2 Additional Projectiles. Getting extra projectiles can make all of the Hydra's attacks very deadly and difficult to avoid, especially her fork arrow attack that will now fire three base arrows that will continue to fork. Now to begin the fight, make sure you have all of your defenses and offenses prepared. You will be able to move up to around the center of the arena before triggering the Hydra. This allows for prep, placing totems, and charging up your skills. This fight requires a lot of movement and awareness of the arena. You will want to try and stay near the Hydra for both melee and range, 
moving around her constantly to avoid her projectile attacks. Getting too far from her can make dodging and predicting her attacks more difficult. She will generally stay in one location, turning to target you and to fire off doom arrows and barrages in quick succession. Whenever she powers up to fire her fork arrow, make sure to be moving out of the way and behind the Hydra. This fight can be very hectic and difficult for many builds, as the frost bolts and attacks by the Hydra can kill you before you can react. Make sure to make use of your chill and freeze immunity flasks, as well as a proper movement skill to dodge the frost bolts and get out of the way of the attacks. Do not feel pressured to attack the Hydra if there is no clear path to her, just maintain your avoidances until you get a good opening for damage. Again, if you ever run out of flasks, feel free to take a portal out to reset them. Notable drops from the Guardian of the Hydra include Snake Pit, Sliver Tongue, and Fragment of the Hydra. Now that you have killed two of the Guardians, it's time to move on to the third Guardian, the Guardian of the Phoenix. The Guardian of the Phoenix resides in the Forge of the Phoenix map. This Guardian sought little value in New Life, and now New Life surrounds him. He dual wields flaming swords and deals fire damage, and is immune to knockback, ignite, chill, and freeze. The Phoenix is a fast moving foe that will always keep you within melee range, making sure to never let you get too far away. The Phoenix performs the following moves. Melee attack, a basic melee attack that deals fire damage and can ignite. Recommendation, this move is not too deadly and can be tanked. Range players can make an effort to keep distance between the Phoenix to avoid this attack. Whirling charge, Locks onto a target, charges up, and spins to the target's original location, dealing fire damage multiple times throughout its path. Recommendation: If you are melee, move to the back of the phoenix when you see this move charge up. If you are range, move to the left or right of your current location. Firebomb. The phoenix stops where he is and brings his swords down into the ground. He first emits a debuff that temporarily reduces the player's fire resistance by negative 50%. This is from your uncapped resistance. He then begins to charge for 4 seconds and releases a large discharge that deals fire damage and can ignite. Recommendation: Move as far as possible from the phoenix to avoid taking damage from this attack as it is extremely deadly. Now for every 10% of life that the boss loses, the following will happen. Resistance debuff. The player's maximum fire resistance is reduced by 1% until the boss is killed. This means when the phoenix is below 10% life, you will only have 66% fire resistance. Add spawn, a phoenix that will shoot fire projectiles at the player. Phoenixes are revived a few seconds after they are killed. Fire spout, a fire spout that deals fire damage in a small AoE around it as it travels around the arena. Each spout only lasts for a few seconds and is soon replaced by another spout. These can stun players with low stun thresholds very easily. For this encounter, you will want to make sure you have good elemental mitigations. Fortify is a good all-around candidate for this. You will also want to make an effort to be overcapped on your fire resistance by at least 50%. For flasks, you will want to make use of the following. Stibnite flask and a ruby flask. A stibnite flask applies blind to the phoenix, making him inaccurate so he will hit you less often. A ruby flask base is a good option to help counteract the minus maximum fire resistance that occurs during the duration of the fight. For flask affixes, you will want to make use of the following. Of dousing. This flask affix is recommended if you do not have proper regeneration mechanics to keep the ignite degenerations off of you. Specific deadly map mods for this boss include minus maximum to player resistances, players are cursed with elemental weakness, and monsters have X increased area of effect. Minus maximum resistances will result in more than 18% minus maximum fire resistance by the end of the fight. Getting monster area of effect combined with the boss area of effect can make for an unavoidable firebomb attack. Ensure to not combine these modifiers. Like with the Guardian of the Hydra, you will have up to halfway into the arena before you trigger the boss, allowing for preparation and placement of totems for this fight. You can keep your normal engagement ranges for your class. You will want to get in as much damage as possible while the Phoenix is not performing any specific attacks. Once the Phoenix begins to perform a whirling charge, make sure to move to the back of the Phoenix, or to the left or right, to avoid taking numerous hits from the attack. When the Phoenix begins his firebomb channeling, make sure to move as far away from him as possible, taking this time to clean up Phoenix adds and gain some flask charges. As you lower the Phoenix's health below 50%, make sure to utilize your Ruby Flask if you have chosen to take one to help counteract the minus maximum fire resistance penalty that you suffer. You will also want to take care of straggling Phoenix adds as they can become overbearing at this point. If you ever run out of flasks, feel free to take a portal and reset them. This fight can get very clustered if you are unable to clean up the adds and have to fight the Phoenix for extended time while he is near death. Ensure to make use of your flasks and movement skills to keep out of the chaos as best as possible. Notable drops from the Guardian of the Phoenix include Eye of Innocence, Razor of the Seventh Sun, and Fragment of the Phoenix. Now that you have defeated the Guardian of the Phoenix, there is only one Guardian remaining that holds the last fragment key to the Shaper's Realm in the Void. This is the Guardian of the Chimera.
The Guardian of the Chimera resides in the pit of the Chimera map. He has unleashed a beast that resides within him and has made his true self known. He dual wields claws that deal physical damage and is immune to knockback, bleeding, poison, chill, and freeze. The Chimera moves quickly, getting on top of you to deal damage very fast. He has a plethora of moves as well as deadly ad phases that can be problematic for many builds. The Chimera fight consists of two main phases, a boss phase and an ad phase. There are four boss phases and three ad phases that occur at set intervals of the boss's life. During the boss phases, the Chimera performs the following moves. Melee attack. A basic melee attack that deals physical damage. Recommendation. This move is not too deadly and can be tanked. Ranged players can make an effort to keep a distance between the Chimera to a delay and possibly avoid this attack. Flicker Strike. The Chimera picks a target and flickers to it, dealing physical damage. Recommendation. This strike does not deal deadly damage and can be tanked. Make sure to have proper mitigations up. Flicker Lance. The Chimera strikes the chosen target location, inflicting anything at it with bleeding that lasts for 5 seconds. This move can be sidestepped. Recommendation. Make sure to have a bleed immunity flask ready to dispel the bleeding effect if you are struck. Charge Attack. The Chimera charges up and strikes three times, dealing 60% of the basic melee attack physical damage each hit. This move can be sidestepped. Recommendation. Sidestep this move once you see him begin to charge up the attack, hopefully avoiding one or two of the hits. Combo Attack. A red circle appears on the ground around the Chimera. Anything within this area will be struck by the combo attack that the Chimera performs a few seconds after it is placed. This attack strikes between 5 and 6 times and deals 125% of his base physical damage per attack. This move is very deadly. Recommendation: Move out of the red circle once it appears to avoid taking any damage from this attack. Hidden Attack Numerous smoke clouds appear, shrouding the Chimera within one of them. The player must travel through the smoke clouds to try and find the Chimera. He can be within any of the clouds and will deal 80% of his base melee attack damage to the player consistently while they are trying to discover his location. This attack cannot be evaded or dodged and can only be stopped by finding the Chimera. This attack can occur multiple times after each ad phase. Recommendation: This is the toughest move that the Chimera performs, with a high probability of death. Make sure to use a fast movement skill or a quicksilver flask to find the Chimera as fast as possible. Sometimes you can get lucky and find him from the first cloud or get unlucky and find him in the last cloud. Ad phase. For every 25% health that the Chimera loses, he will retreat outside the arena and release very strong adds and waves from the three cages in the top left, top right, and bottom right corners of the arena. These adds are much stronger than average map monsters, and they occur in the following monster types. Guardian's Goatman. These leap and deal physical damage. Guardian's Snakes. Fire ranged projectiles that deal chaos damage. And Guardian's Hellion. Attack with melee and deal fire damage. When these adds spawn, they will always spawn in a homogeneous manner, and that if Goatmen spawn, they will only be Goatmen spawning for the rest of that ad phase. These ad types can also occur in any order, meaning that one encounter you have Chaos Snakes on the first ad spawn, and then on the second encounter you have them as the last ad spawn. Each ad type also has a mini unique boss that deals deadly amounts of damage. This unique ad will always spawn in the bottom right cage. The mini bosses include Aspect of the Goat, performs the following moves. Orb Projectile. Constantly fires a single physical damage projectile. Physical Cascade. A physical damage cascade that can strike the target numerous times. Recommendation is to move out of the way of the cascade and not follow it, and try to kill this boss as quickly as possible. Aspect of the Snake. Performs the following moves. Single Projectile. Fires a single chaos projectile that can inflict poison and leaves desecrated ground in its path. Multiple Projectiles. Fires three chaos damage projectiles that can inflict poison. Recommendation is to move in a circle around the snake, avoiding his projectiles at all costs. Aspect of the Hellion performs the following moves. Enrage. Gains attack and movement speed, chasing the target, striking it with physical damage and applying bleed. Fire Mortar. Attacks with three fire damage projectiles with a varied spread. Recommendation for this boss. Make sure to have a bleed removal flask ready for his enrage, and try to move around to avoid his fire mortars. Recommendation for the entire ad phase. You will want to move around the arena, cleaning up the adds as they spawn so they do not compile and attack you at all at the same time. Make sure to keep up your defenses as these adds deal deadly damage. Once you kill three waves of adds from all of the cages, you will want to move to the bottom right corner cage to ensure that you kill the mini unique boss as quickly as possible. These bosses deal very deadly damage and do have the potential of one-shotting you. For this encounter, you will want to make sure you have good physical mitigations. Fortify and Endurance Charges are good candidates for this. For flasks, you will want to make use of the following. Basalt Flask, Stibnite Flask, and Amethyst Flask Base. Again, 
Basalt Flask provides the flat 20% physical mitigation, while the Stib Knight blinds the Chimera, making him hit less frequently. If you are not Chaos Inoculation, you will want to make use of an Amethyst Flask base to mitigate damage from the Chaos Snakes in the add phase. For Flask Affixes, you will want to make use of the following. Of Staunching. This Flask Affix is recommended for the removal of bleeds that the Chimera and adds can apply. Specific deadly map mods for this boss include Players are cursed with vulnerability. This is because the boss's damage is physical, as well as most of the add damage is physical. Like with the Guardian of the Hydra and Phoenix, you will have up to halfway in the arena before you trigger the boss, allowing for preparation and placement of totems. For this encounter, you will want to try and time your defensive flask usage for the Chimera's charge and hidden attacks. You can also, however, make liberal use of the Stib Knight flask to help reduce the number of times that the Chimera can hit you with his basic attacks. The rest of his moves are manageable, and in general, do not deal deadly damage. Always move out of the way of the red circle when the Chimera performs his combo attack. If you are unable to move out of the way, you can make sure to pop your defensive flasks. Once you reach the ad phase, make sure to keep moving around from cage to cage, cleaning up the adds in small groups. After three waves have spawned, make sure to get to the bottom right cage to kill the unique ad as fast as possible. Once these adds are dead, the Chimera will return to the arena and usually go right into a hidden attack phase. This is when you will want to pop your defensive mitigation flasks, basalt or granite, and pass through as many smoke clouds as fast as you can. This is the toughest phase and can be very deadly depending on your build. Once you have managed to find him, you will repeat this pattern for the Chimera and the adds two more times until he is defeated. Notable drops from the Guardian of the Chimera include Obscurantis, the Scourge, and Fragment of the Chimera. With the Guardian of the Chimera fallen, you have managed to take down all of the Guardians of the Void. These are some very difficult fights and required a lot of practice, skill, and finesse depending on your chosen build. Do not fear losing a map or two, as you will have to invest in order to learn. With these Guardians defeated, you have also gained their respective fragments. These fragments unlock access to the Void, where the Shaper's Realm exists, whom we must confront next to stop the corruption and decay of the world of Rayclast. This, Exiles, will be one tough fight. Now I want to give out a big thanks to everybody who has been supporting me to create these videos through just viewing the videos all the way to donations. All of your feedback and support, regardless of how small you think it may be, has been amazing. This channel has grown way faster than I expected it to, and I hope to keep up the quality and meet expectations. Since I have made a Patreon, I will now be including all of those supporters' names at the end of my videos. Again, thank you so much for the support, and I will see you in the next one, Exile.